What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Today we have a very interesting little rifle. This is the Rossi 92 357 Magnum lever action rifle. Now I'm sure you're probably thinking that doesn't look anything like a Rossi 92 and that's because this is the Midwest Industries version, which is why it looks so freaking cool. The stock fore end, rails, shell holders, muzzle brake, pretty much everything on this rifle except the receiver is thanks to Midwest Industries. So I really appreciate them for letting me try this beauty. You guys know I love modern tactical lever action rifles, and this is basically the pinnacle of tactical lever guns in 2024. So I cannot wait to try this thing. I'll go into more detail later in the video on all these accessories, but I've been waiting on this one for quite a while. So first, let's shoot this thing. All right, I've been keeping this rifle a secret from you guys for like over a month because they wanted me to wait until all these products were available to the public. And you have no idea how difficult that was, walking by this thing every day and not being able to shoot it. I know, poor me. Well, the embargo has lifted, all these products have been released, and we finally get to shoot this puppy. Let's try our very first cowboy flip. Oh yeah. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, very first shots, 357 Magnum. It holds eight plus one, I believe, and I've got five or six in there, so. Let's do it. I love 357 Magnum out of a long gun. It just feels so good. Oh yeah. Well, this is only my second or third time shooting a 357 lever gun, and I absolutely love it. Such a good caliber for this rifle, and I'm so used to getting beat up by the 4570 that this thing just feels like nothing. I might like it more than the 4570, believe it or not. Let's shoot it again just to make sure, for research purposes. I love lever guns. And by the way, the optic and light that we have on here are both from opticsplanet.com. So I wanna thank them as well. If you shop there, use our coupon code ONESHOT and you will get 7% off your order. The red dot is the new Burris Fast Fire 4. And I'm already liking this thing quite a bit. I have the Fast Fire 3 on my 500 Nitro Express and that thing has been through hell and back and it just keeps working. So I definitely trust Burris. Uh, this one has multiple reticles you can cycle through, bunch of different modes. It's a very cool little red dot. And then the light is the Streamlight Protac HLX. This one mounts straight to M-Lock, so you don't need any Picatinny rails or nothing like that. And then over here, we have the pressure pad with momentary and constant on. I think any good home defense rifle definitely needs a weapon light. So that kind of completes this entire setup. See if we can clear the shoot steel Texas star. Haven't shot this one in a while. I got very lucky on that. I don't know why, but it really never started spinning. <laughs> that was easy. Now, one thing I like about 357 Magnum is the ability to interchange it with 38 Special. 38 Special has way less recoil, which makes it easier to shoot and practice with. It's also usually a little bit cheaper, so. I've got some 38s in here. Let's try these. <laughs> There's like no recoil. That felt like a 22. Yeah, I have never shot 38 Special through a long gun before. That has no recoil. <laughs> cool. All right, guys, I'll go ahead and give you a quick rundown of everything we have on this rifle, starting with probably my favorite upgrade, the butt stock. So this is the Midwest Industries Lever Action Stock Series, and this is just one of several different versions that they have. They also make these for Rossi, Marlin, Henry, Winchester, pretty much every big lever gun brand out there. And I love this buttstock. So it's obviously skeletonized with M-lock slots, so you can add pretty much any accessories that you want. I've basically just covered this one in spare ammo because you can never have too much ammo on board with a lever action rifle. And then if I flip it over, you can see we've got the adjustable cheek piece that also comes with these butt stocks. So you can raise or lower that to whichever setting you want. By the way, everything on this stock is ambidextrous as well, which 
as a lefty, I really appreciate. Nice butt pad on the back and then on the front, it's got removable G10 grips, which you can customize with a number of different options. So again, definitely an upgrade from the factory in my opinion, and I absolutely love this butt stock. And then moving forward, we have the new M-Lock G2 handguard from Midwest Industries, which I'm also a big fan of. They put a new mounting block system on these Gen 2 handguards to make it more rigid and secure on the rifle, which is obviously a good thing. It's almost the length of the entire magazine tube. But yeah, handguard's great. It looks cool, feels good, and it allows you to add accessories to your firearm, which is always a good thing. They've got ghost ring sights and extended Picatinny rails on top so you can mount optics, lights, stuff like that. And then on the very end, we have the Midwest Industries muzzle brake, which I believe is very effective. I haven't shot it without to compare, but I was shocked at how little recoil this thing had, even when we're shooting, you know, hot 357. So I've always been a fan of Midwest Industries muzzle brakes. I've got three or four on other rifles already, and this one is no exception. It seems to be very effective. So there it is, the Rossi R92 Midwest Industries version. Looks good, works well, and I'm definitely a fan. And of course, it just started raining on us. It seems like this happens pretty much every day, but I'm just gonna try and power through it. So next up, I wanna do a couple ballistics tests with our Midwest Industries lever action rifle and see what kind of performance we get. So obviously with a 357, you have the option to shoot 357 or 38 Special. 357 Magnum definitely being the more powerful of the two. But today, we have an interesting 38 Special. This, is the Liberty Civil Defense. And these rounds are notoriously fast and lightweight in pretty much every caliber. This is a 50 grain bullet going 1500 feet per second. So not your standard 38 special target load. It's probably not sniffing a 357 in terms of power, but I wanna see how they compare. And for this one, we have two 10% FBI blocks from clearballistics.com. They're almost so clear you can't even see them. There they are. Clear Ballistics is another channel sponsor that I am very grateful for. If you need ballistics gel, I highly recommend clearballistics.com. All right, we'll go ahead and start with the Liberty Civil Defense 38 Special. Again, this is a 50 grain bullet going 1500 feet per second. So we'll see how this does, then we'll compare it with the 357. I have no idea where my holdover's at, so I'll just put it towards the top of the gel block. Okay, well this is interesting. It went in right there a couple inches from the top of the gel block. Hopefully you can see in there, there's probably 10 to 15 bullet fragments two or three inches into the gel block. Unfortunately, about six inches in, the bullet curved up and exited the top of the gel. Not the result I was looking for, so we'll try it again. Liberty Civil Defense, take two. Try to put this one a little bit lower. Same hole. <laughs> And that one went in right there, pretty much right next to the first one that we shot. And from the front, it looks awesome. Those bullets are like star bursting and breaking into a bunch of little fragments pretty much as soon as they hit the gel. Over here, maybe you can see it a little bit better. Obviously, some of those fragments are from the first one and the wound cavity is kind of hard to see because it did go so close, but not bad for a 38 Special, that's for sure. And then this one, did not exit the gel block. It penetrated pretty much straight down the middle and came to a stop right there. These are 16 inch gel blocks, so I would say that one got at least 12 inches of penetration. Okay, I switched the gel blocks around so we have a fresh one up front. Now we're gonna try the 357 Magnum. This is a 158 grain jacketed hollow point. So, pretty standard 357. This one should hit a little bit harder. Well, these results are apples and oranges. The 357 went in right there. Obviously it moved the ballistic shell quite a bit more than the 38 Special. If we go over here, you can see that wound cavity. Probably two to three times the size of the 38 at least. Definitely did more damage. The bullet continued down the gel. Probably 12 to 13 inches in, it started breaking apart. We have some fragments right there. Looks like it's mostly just copper jacket. And then the bullet continued into the second block, probably six inches at least. 
and came to a stop right there. It's fully expanded, looks like it performed perfectly, and obviously it got way more penetration and did way more damage than the 38 Special did. Obviously the Liberty Civil Defense is not a regular 38 Special, it is very fast and lightweight, so it's gonna break apart, probably get less penetration than another 38 Special would. But for self-defense rounds, there aren't many in 38 Special that I would recommend. I actually think the Civil Defense did very well, but 357 is just on a whole nother level. All right, now that we know which of our bullets is most effective, let's go ahead and do a real self-defense test on a ballistic dummy lab head. I have actually shot one of these before with a 357 Magnum, but it was a revolver. And I'll be honest, it was probably my favorite handgun round I've ever tested on one of these things. It didn't grenade the head like some really powerful rifles do, but it hit hard, did a lot of damage, and most importantly, it did not exit the other side, which is exactly what you want from a self-defense handgun round. So I'm curious to see what it will do out of the rifle. After seeing that ballistic shell result, I'll be surprised if it doesn't pass all the way through because that was a lot of penetration, but let's find out. Same bullet we tested in ballistic shell, 357 Magnum, 158 grain jacketed hollow point. And since we're going to a gunfight, we gotta give her a John Wayne flip. Let's do it. Boy, it'd be a real Western move to bring this bad boy to defend yourself. I wouldn't mind it. Let's see what it does. Woo! That was a very different result than we got out of the handgun. <laughs> My God. Well, not only was that an epic result ballistically, but on the high-speed footage, you can see his top smoking after that bullet impact. Don't think I've ever seen that before in all the tests that we've done. So, that was epic. Here is what's left of our ballistic dummy head, and I don't know why that was such a dramatically different result than we got from the 357 revolver. It might be because I hit a little bit higher. You can see the bullet impact right there in the middle of the forehead, but it is, you know, an inch or so higher than we got from the last one, probably. I'm just assuming, I don't know. So maybe it kind of hit high, canoed the top of his head and didn't contain it as well as it did from the revolver. Plus, obviously out of a long gun, you're getting a lot more velocity on that bullet. So it's gonna give you a better result. And then here is what we have on the back. So there's the exit hole right there. It really didn't hit that high, to be honest. It was still in the middle of the ballistic dummy head. And you can see where the bullet exited out right there. And then obviously on top, it's a canoe and just scrambled eggs in there. I see no bullet fragments no traces of anything stopping in our ballistic dummy head this time. So it passed all the way through. And it did a lot of damage in the process. Good grief. There's your answer on 357 Magnum lever action rifles for self-defense. I think it would work. <laughs> All right, guys, that is going to conclude our video on the Midwest Industries Rossi 92 357 Magnum lever action rifle. Again, I want to thank Midwest Industries for sending this out. I really appreciate that. And all of this stuff is now available to the public. The G2 handguard, the butt stock, the shell holders, pretty much everything on this rifle is from Midwest Industries and I am a huge fan. This thing was awesome, worked flawlessly. Um, I think modern tactical lever guns are kind of the way to go. They're some of my favorite guns to shoot and they just make lever guns cooler in my opinion and Midwest has put together a good one here. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. As always, hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.